Sometimes fate has other plans for you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 famous people who narrowly avoided death on 9-11. And it sounded just like a missile coming in with a large explosion and then debris showering down um, in front of us. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at those famous people who lived through some close calls on the morning of September 11, 2001, whether in the air or on the ground. And I sort of commuted a lot on that flight with the West Wing, as we all did. Number 10, Michael Lomonaco. And before I could even get out that door, I could see something dreadful had happened. On the morning of 9-11, Michael Lomonaco was serving as director and head chef at Windows on the World, the globally famous restaurant perched atop the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Lomonaco arrived early to work, so he used that time to stop at the lens crafters in the tower's concourse to get his glasses fixed. While this took slightly longer than he was anticipating, the delay ended up saving his life, as he soon heard the rumble from the plane and was quickly evacuated. While Lomonaco was safe, many of his friends and employees were not so lucky, and he could only stare in horror as his restaurant was destroyed. We haven't lost anybody yet. They're, we can't say lost. They're just, they, they haven't been found. Number nine, Patty Austin. Patty Austin was once known as Queen of the Jingles due to her appearances in many catchy commercials, and she's since gone on to win a Grammy Award for her album, Avant Gershwin. Austin was set to perform at Michael Jackson's 30th anniversary celebration at Madison Square Garden, a set of concerts taking place on September 7th and 10th, 2001. However, her mother suffered a stroke back in San Francisco, forcing Austin to fly home early and skip the performance on the 10th. I'll fly you in for the first show, not the second one. That's what saved my life. Had she not, she would have boarded United Airlines Flight 93 on the morning of the 11th, the plane that was hijacked and crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. Number eight, Jim Pierce. At the time of the attacks, Jim Pierce was the managing director of an insurance company called Aon Corporation. He's also the cousin of then President George W. Bush. His company's offices were located on the top floors of the South Tower, and a meeting was scheduled there on the morning of 9-11. However, the group grew too large, and the meeting was therefore moved to a nearby building at the last minute to accommodate. Pierce was in this building when the plane struck the South Tower at 9.03 a.m. And it wasn't really all that long after uh, the plane hit that we began to see uh, bodies jumping out. Unfortunately, 12 employees did not get the memo, as they were in the original meeting location when the plane struck. 11 of them died. Number seven, Jackie Chan. <laughs> this one is an unconfirmed story, but it's still an interesting story nonetheless. As the tale goes, Chan was set to film a stunt for an upcoming movie at the Towers on the morning of 9-11, but he traveled to Toronto at the last minute to film the tuxedo instead. However, as the original movie was suffering from production problems and filming for the tuxedo was planned far in advance, these plans were likely made and canceled long before 9-11. Even so, it is entirely possible that Chan was at one time scheduled to be at the Towers on the morning of September 11th. I always wanted to go to Madison Square Garden, see the next play. New York City? Number six, Rob Lowe. You're fired, S. Seaborn. In September of 2001, Rob Lowe was still a regular on the West Wing and often flew on a route from Dulles International to Los Angeles, the same route that ended up hitting the Pentagon on the morning of 9-11. Lowe later found out that one day, a couple of weeks prior to the attacks, he had flown with the terrorists who would eventually take part in 9-11 on their practice run. New science, new technology is making the difference between life and death, and so we need a national commitment equal to this unparalleled moment of possibility. While Lowe thought nothing of it at the time, he later received a letter from the Attorney General of Maryland declaring that he was on the dry run and might have had to testify against Al-Qaeda leader Zakarias Musawi. Uh, they have the flight manifest and, and this guy, this lunatic, wants to talk to you. Number five, Gabare Sidibe. Sidibe made quite the name for herself in 2009 when she starred in Precious, a role that secured her an Academy Award nomination. I'm dying this 
but eight years earlier, she was a student at Borough of Manhattan Community College. On the morning of September 11th, she did what any student does. She slept in and missed her class. Later that day, debris from one of the falling towers hit the building she was supposed to be having class in, causing extensive damage and killing both students and teachers who were inside at the time. If survival is so important to you, you better find out who you're talking to. Number four, Ian Thorpe. Ian Thorpe was on top of the world in the summer of 2001. He was 18 years old, had just won five Olympic medals in Sydney, and won six gold medals at the 2001 World Aquatics Championships, making him the first person to do so. Can anyone beat this bloke? 310 days that win was coming and didn't he love every second of it? Here comes a double fist bump, another world record. He was out for a run on the morning of September 11th when he came across the Twin Towers. He then decided to return to his hotel room to grab his camera and traveling partner before venturing back and playing tourist. However, once he returned to his hotel, he turned on the TV and discovered that the planes had hit. I think without the support that I've had from my family, I wouldn't have been able to do what, I, what I've done. Number three, Sarah Ferguson. Stunning. Uh, red, I wanted um, a ruby. Sarah Ferguson became world famous as Sarah, Duchess of York, since she was married to Prince Andrew, Duke of York, the son of Queen Elizabeth II. While they divorced in 1996, she was still active in the public eye, especially with her charity, Chances for Children, whose offices were on the 101st floor of the North Tower. Ferguson was planning on being there the morning of 9-11, but she was being interviewed on Good Morning America and running behind schedule. If she hadn't been interviewed that day, or if the interview had been on schedule, she would have almost certainly died. And Catherine's incredible, and I just think it's just all goodness, and we need to hear more about goodness. Number two, Mark Wahlberg. Okay, I think you all are trying to run out of fuel as the wheels touch down. Wahlberg was scheduled to take American Airlines Flight 11, leaving from Boston to Los Angeles, but decided to cancel his plans a week earlier. Instead, he and a few buddies flew to Toronto to watch another Friends movie, which was being shown at the Toronto Film Festival, and he was going to fly back to LA from Toronto. This decision ended up saving his life. He later received a bit of flack for his response to the tragedy, as he went on to say that had he been on Flight 11, he would have handled the situation and foiled the terrorist plot himself. Shit. Calm down, all right? Most of the people in the world do it every day. What's the big deal? And as it turns out, he wasn't even the only celebrity scheduled on that flight. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. And so that particular morning, uh, because I have, I call it hair and fair skin, and uh, I'm an annuity to the dermatologist, uh, my wife, God bless her, had made an appointment for me uh, at the doctor. I would be fine with, like, joking around boxing, but they're, like, trying to kill me. That girl seriously wanted to kill me. Well, her name was Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Seth MacFarlane. By September 2001, Seth MacFarlane's career was skyrocketing. He was only 27 years old, and his acclaimed show Family Guy was in the middle of its third season. Houston, we have a solution. Houston's for space, not everyday air travel. Because of his success, he was giving a speech at his alma mater in Rhode Island on the night of September 10th, due to fly back to LA in the morning. However, McFarlane was hungover, overslept, and had been given the wrong departure time by his travel agent. So, he missed American Airlines Flight 11 by 15 minutes. And this was a confluence of events that undoubtedly saved his life. Sat there and watched the second plane hit and they announced what flight it was, and I turned to the guy next to me and, and uh, and said, my, my God, that, that was the flight I was supposed to be on. I, I was late. I missed it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.